What is the goal of human life? What is the purpose of human life? Or in other words, why life? That's a question. When it comes to life and existence, you never ask why. When it comes to fundamental existence, you never ask why. Because if you ask why, then I have to tell you a story. <clears throat> when I say a story, even if it's a real story, you know, a real story, whatever I speak, if it is not in your experience, it is just a story. The only option that you have is either you believe me or you disbelieve me, yes? If you believe me, it doesn't get you any closer to truth. If you disbelieve me, it doesn't get you at all. So, you never ask why. Right now you're here with life. Why such a question has come? What is the goal of life? Because the process is not enough, isn't it? Yes? The process of life is not enough somehow. Suppose you were bursting with ecstasy every moment of your life, such a question would never come, what is the goal of life? Because to live is the goal of life, to live and to live totally. To live totally does not mean party every night. <laughs> to live totally means when you are here, you must experience all aspects of life and go. Whatever this is, every aspect of what this is, must come into your experience before you fall dead, isn't it so? Yes? This must happen, isn't it so, for every human being? Or do you want to just experience ten percent of you and go away? You must experience what this life is totally, isn't it? Before you go, you must experience this. If you do experience that, then such questions will never arise in your mind because that's not the way existence is. Logically, your question is very correct. Okay, I'm living here, what is the goal of my life? If I tell you the goal of your life is you must attain to God, so we're making lots of assumptions, isn't it? We're assumption… we're making assumptions about various things which are not yet in our experience, isn't it? The moment you make assumptions about things which are not in your experience, you will become hallucinatory. Ninety-nine percent of the world's religion is hallucinatory, please see. Because you're assuming things that are not in your experience and working with that which you have assumed. The moment you give power to things that you have assumed, your mind will just fly off into all types of imagination and it'll be more real than real. See, your imagination can be more real than real, isn't it so? You go and sit in a cinema, it is just two-dimensional, just play of light and sound. But its impact is much more than the life itself, isn't it so? Yes? You went and sat in IMAX theater? Its impact is bigger than life, isn't it? But is it bigger than life? Do you think so? Is it really bigger than life? Not at all. It is just that imagination has such power. Imagination, thought, emotion, all these things are a way to pave the way. Now I have a thought, I want to go to New York. This paves the way. Once I say, I want to go to New York, now, okay, how to go, shall I buy the ticket, shall I walk it, what shall I do, shall I drive, it's paving the way. But if I sit here and go on thinking New York, I'll never make it. Thought is not a reality that takes you there. It only paves the way, it makes you willing, that's all. Yes? Thought and emotion only makes you willing, it's never the real thing. But once you start giving too much significance to your thought and emotion, it starts seeming like as if it's the real thing more real than the real. What you're thinking in your head is more real than what's around you, isn't it so? Yes?
That's the whole problem with life right now, that your thought and emotion has become a bigger reality than reality itself. Now, this is like, you know, if you go probably in the countryside, there'll be, what do you call them? We call them hand post. What do you call them here? You know? A hand post? What do you call it? Something, a marker? A signpost, okay? So, these are called hand posts usually because they used to be made like hands at one time, you know? Like this it used to be. Have you seen them? Like this, it says, this way to New York. So, you go and sit on this and you think you're in New York. <coughs> That's not New York, isn't it? So, thought is only a signpost, it points you in the direction you want to go, but it never takes you there, it cannot take you there. But people who think it is taking them there have become hallucinatory in such a way that even reality cannot get them out. Even if you pick, poke them with a knife, they will not know, they are somewhere else. Their thought and emotion is far more important than that. This is a scrooge which has taken humanity such a big way, <laughs> such a big way. And uh, of all the type of thoughts and emotions that we generate, the religious thought and religious emotion or spiritual thought and spiritual emotion are most dangerous because they're powerful, empowered by the otherworldly. Because of that kind of power, it just rules people. It just rules people so deeply and we can always see that some other religion that you don't belong to, what stupidity, what nonsense they're doing, but what you're doing is just never visible, isn't it? <laughs> yes? Isn't it so? Isn't it happening every day? Because once the thought and emotion becomes powerful, you start believing it. Once you start believing, Something which is not yet in your experience, you are a dangerous human being. Because all the conflict on the planet, even today what's happening, though people try to project it as it is good versus evil, though people are trying to project it as good versus evil, it is not about good and evil. It is always about one man's belief versus another man's belief, isn't it so? Always between one man's belief and another man's belief. Why can't we be sincere enough to simply see whatever we do not know as we do not know? What is the problem? This is the biggest human problem. They can't see that they don't know. They have to bullshit themselves all the time. And this is not a joke. This is a terrible, terrible tragedy on the planet, isn't it? This is not a joke, this is not a simple thing. It has cost phenomenally for human life on this planet, phenomenally and still continuing to cost. But what we think and feel is so important, isn't it? So, what is the goal? What if there is no goal, what will you do? Will you die tomorrow? Suppose there is no goal, what to do? You want to die? Isn't it wonderful, there's nowhere to go? <laughs> yes? <laughs> Isn't it really great, there's no way to… nowhere to go, you don't have to work your way to heaven, you can just live here happily. No, 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 we are going to heaven. If you're so sure you're going to heaven, what are you waiting for? <laughs> If you're so dead sure, you're anyway going to heaven, what are you waiting for? I can't understand the logic. <laughs> huh? Waiting for the ticket. Waiting for the ticket <laughs> All you have to do is uh, go and cut your throat in front of the temple. You understand? <laughs> Whichever is your favorite temple, it'll happen. People one hundred percent believe after I die, I will go to the lap of God. If you are going to the lap of God, you should not delay it. Really? Isn't it so? Such a sacred duty, can you delay it? 
you must go today, not even tomorrow. <laughs> no, you want to live long. So why are you postponing such a wonderful opportunity? That's because you're full of bull. <laughs> you tell yourself things which are not yet a reality for you. I'm not questioning whether these things exist, not exist, but it's not at a reality for you. If you talk about things which are not at a reality for you, to put it very bluntly, it just amounts to lying. This lying has cost phenomenally for individual human beings and for the whole humanity in a big way. For more on Sadhguru, visit www.ishafoundation.org.